All right, the uh, Raw Show had a lot of noteworthy things on it, including the opener, which was Drew McIntyre and Cody Rhodes. And they had a very, very good, probably pay-per-view caliber match. It went through two commercial breaks, three segments. And they're doing this match, great heat, crowd hates Drew, they love Cody. And finally there at the end, Jim Uso hits the ring to distract Cody. Drew goes after him, but Cody avoids it, goes for the crossroads. Ref is distracted, and Solo comes out of nowhere. He spikes Cody in the neck. Drew hits the Claymore and pins him. This is the first time that Cody has been pinned since he lost to Roman Reigns. And only the second time since he's been back. Yep, the second time since he's returned that he's been pinned. And when this match was over... I had three takeaways, okay? Yes. You only hold, do you hold up three fingers or two? I have three takeaways. Okay, that you, you can. Takeaway number one is Drew almost certainly has to be re-signed. Um, I think he's agreed. I, I'll find out. I'll find out. I mean, he wasn't, he wasn't as of um, Thursday. But, um, he, but he's either got to be resigned, or I mean, they have they, they, a strong verbal commitment for him to oh, beat Cody in this match. Well, he's not going anywhere. I mean, I think that's pretty clear. Because here's the thing: number one, like one of the things that I think was up in the air was the idea of he wanted to be used well, and obviously he's being used really well, and he's having a lot of fun with this portrayal. So. Um, you know, it, it would be, it would not be smart because you never know, like when you leave, if you come back, you know, if, if they'll forget, not forget about you, but you'll have the momentum. So the thing is, is like, if Cody wins the title, which he should, Drew is now in theory, the top contender. The thing is, is that that was we, number two. Drew is, is almost certainly his first major challenger after he wins the title. But then what do you do with Drew? Do you just beat him in the chamber and not put him with uh, Seth Rollins? Or do you put him in with Seth Rollins? But then if they're both, if you put him with Seth and he loses, that's kind of stupid if he's going to then feud with Cody. if And plus, he's been beaten by Seth so many times. So it's almost like, you know, maybe he gets screwed in the chamber by, some, by something. I don't know. It, the booking this weekend of the, of the men's chamber is going to be very interesting. But I do think when this match was over, my first thought was is like, yeah, Drew McIntyre is going to be the first challenger for Cody. It makes all the sense in the world. Yeah. And then my other takeaway is that they're going to do a spot at WrestleMania where Solo shows up and he thumbs Cody and they have an incredible near fall, which he is going to kick out of. Yeah, I think so. I think so. They sh- that, that, that makes all the sense in the world, too. So, yeah, this was a great match and a uh, an excellent finish, I thought, in terms of setting up a lot of different things for down the road. Mm-hmm. I thought it was a, I thought it was a smart finish, and the deal was is they try to make Drew to be a hypocrite because um, you know Drew knew he saw that Cody was screwed and he still took advantage of it, and then Drew goes, you know, like and it was, and it was brought up. I mean, there's a lot of stuff I really liked about the show. You know, another thing I like is um, the the new production is really grown on me. We know when they're doing the stuff with just a lot of the new different things that they never did under Kevin Dunn. Um, that they that they're doing with the show new um, you know like the guys come into the building and the time you know just give it that sports feel and they they did a lot of they did even more of this on this show than they've done so far and I think that that just it gives it a better more professional more big league feel I think the TV comes across way more big league um, the way it's being produced now so another good thing. Then we had an Andrade promo, and he said he was a third-generation luchador, and he had no choice. His family, even his wife, were wrestlers. They, they, all they, had they, many... said his wife, they said his wife, but they didn't tell you who his wife was. No, they did not. So they all had many expectations, and he didn't let that stop him. He said, my destiny is here. The era of Andrade El Idolo has yeah. begun. So he is using his AEW nickname and not his former WWE name as part of this new character. But he was he he was um, he used El Idolo in um, WWE before, before he was you know, um, like they called him, like it wasn't it wasn't his ring name, but he was Andrade El Idolo in WWE before, so that's not like they taking the taking everything from the thing, and they may still just introduce him as an Andrade, but you know he will call himself El Idolo. 
Pierce is backstage. He asks Cody how he's doing, and Cody says, I'm fine, I'm fine. And so Pierce walks out, and then in walks Seth, and he looks at Cody, a knowing look. He pats him on the leg, and he walks off. And when this was over, I thought, man, this tag team seems like a lock. Well, I mean, that's the plan. You know, I mean, um, unless something changes, that's the plan. And obviously we saw something change in the women's match, the women's battle royal. Um, and, and it probably did since Friday because remember, if you saw the scene on Friday where they had everyone there that was for the um, the women's chamber, they had Cargill in the room, you know, basically foreshadowing. And the plan was Cargill. And then they took her out for probably all the reasons that I said that they should. You know, I mean, because it, 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 it actually... If you really looked at it, it made no sense to put her in that chamber match. None at all. And so they didn't. They put uh, Raquel Rodriguez in instead. We had the last chance battle royal for the shot of the Elimination Chamber, which, as you just noted, Raquel returned and won. And, uh, you know, they had every, every woman of any renown in WWE that's not in a big match was there. You had Maxine and... There was a redhead that took me forever to identify. It was B Fab. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Like you wouldn't have known who she was until they called her name. No. Yeah. Yeah. So we had a couple of storylines. Natty got revenge on Tegan for throwing her out of the Rumble, and she tossed her out. And then the, you know, Electra tossed Alina, and they brawled to the back. Okay. And, the, and the, the one thing that was funny was when Natalia threw, like, this, this match, for the most part, didn't have any heat. I mean, at, at the end, there was, there, there was, but it was one of those matches where you could see the people were not interested. But when Natalia threw Tegan out, there was like a pop. You know, it's kind of like they knew that spot from, you know, the Rumble, and they got it. But, um, you know, they did the same, uh, you know, Final Four, and then all of a sudden Chelsea Green shows up because she was actually never eliminated, and they teased that she was going to win, but, of course, she did not. Yeah, when it got down to the final four, I mean, it started to get a lot of heat. I mean, they they built up that Raquel, Zoe, and Shayna were Zoe and Shayna together as a team, and then Raquel individually. Yeah, they were the ones who threw I mean, almost everyone. They out. were the ones tossing everybody out. So it came down to the two of them, and Three of them. Uh, Raquel ended up. Yeah, well, Meechan was there as well. She got tossed, but Raquel tossed out Zoe and Shayna, and then uh, yeah, they 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 did the deal where the announcers thought she won, but they didn't ring the bell. And then Chelsea slides in and tries to eliminate Raquel, but then she gets tossed out. And, I mean, the place went crazy when she tossed out Chelsea and won the match. So, I mean, as far as Battle Royals go, the last few minutes, it was pretty good. Yeah, it was a Battle Royal. Um, yeah, the finish was fine, but it was, you know, it was just a Battle Royal that whatever, nothing, you know, it wasn't, and it, you know, I mean, there, you know, a lot of the women there in the, in that battle royal were not that good, and the ones who were good were trying to lead the other ones through, and it was just kind of just kind of there, especially at the early part. You know, when you had a lot of people in there, and didn't do much till you know till the end. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button, and you'll never miss a video again.